All right. Off another winning week. Three and two blazing five. For the record, 13 of the last 15 weeks, or is it 14 of 16, I was 500 or better, 63% after my disastrous opening two weeks. So we had a very good season of Blazing Five. Sharper Square, Chad Millman, CCO Action Network, all odds provided by DraftKings. You know, the game that I talked myself, you and McIntyre talked me out of, was the Texans. And so, um, you know, the numbers, it did feel like a, a, a Colts play. But one of the reasons I think that the consumers, fans, had one of their best years ever. Because increasingly, over the last two years, it has gotten so quarterback-centric uh, last year, seven of seven playoff teams in the NFC had offensive coaches. This year, it's 11 of 14, uh, was 12 of 14 for most of the season. And I think C.J. Stroud, uh, listening, watching those who either cover him or watch him or judge his film, I think we're looking at a deep ball thrower that is one of the best in the league, accuracy, seeing the field. So I know the Browns have a better roster but Joe Flacco's story has actually been better than his quarterbacking. His passer rating's been 90. The story's great. His quarterback play's been okay. I would take C.J. Stroud at home plus two and a half. Don't think they have the roster. I know rookie quarterbacks don't do well in the playoffs. But I think we're looking at a special player, um, sharper square. Yeah, the, the way you're describing it, is similar to how wise guys have been describing C.J. Stroud is that he's Neo from the Matrix, right? There, there's something about him that is unicorn-esque and he defies all the expectations. He breaks all the models. He changes the rules for what we expect. We shouldn't want to bet on a rookie coach with a rookie quarterback against the best defense in the NFL in the playoffs. And yet that's what we want to do. And if you break this game down a little bit further the texans were 6 and 3 at home this year 6 and 2 playing with cj stroud one of those games he missed it happened to be the game in which joe flacco and amari cooper had a career day against the texans in houston when he was at home cj stroud threw for 2500 yards he threw for 7 yard no 9 yards per completion threw for 17 touchdowns when the Cleveland Browns' defense was on the road, they gave up 30 points a game. They had eight road games, nine home games. In those eight road games, they gave up 112 more points than they did in the nine <laughs> games at home. Everything about their defense is different when they're on the road. So the wise guys are on the Texans at two and a half. This game actually opened at two, got that down to one and a half, the public came in and wrote it back up to three. Wise guys took the three. Now it's settled the two and a half. Personally, I'm waiting, hoping that it gets back to three sometime before kickoff. A lot of lines have been moving aggressively before kickoff. So I'm hoping it gets back to three, but uh, the wise guys are with you, Colin. Okay. We're not getting the best of the number, not even close, um, but uh, the Chiefs minus four and a half. I think, you know, it's all bets are off, zero degrees. Uh, I mean, Tua under like 40 degrees has been a different quarterback. Tua in December and January is a 500 quarterback. He's a Hawaiian kid who plays in Miami and then in Alabama. This is, a, he just not, it's just like taking a surfer and saying, here's Anchorage, take your shirt off, good luck. Uh, it's just different. <laughs> so I think, uh, I think I also think, um, the Chiefs rested people at home. They're used to it. It's just a weather advantage. I would take the Chiefs to cover. I The number was at like one and a half at 1.2. Yeah. So it's not the best of the number, but I think I'd still take Chiefs sharper square. Well, it's square at four and a half because of what you just said. Look, if it was Chiefs one and a half, it was Chiefs two, two and a half, even Chiefs three, then the wise guys were playing the Chiefs. But as soon as it got to three and a half, and then all of a sudden it's at four and four and a half, you're just playing a bad number. And long term, you might win this weekend, but long term, it's not the right play, right? And so there's a couple things that have made this number run. I think one, the weather. People already believe the narrative that the Dolphins can't play in the cold. Two, the uh, injuries that the Dolphins have suffered, suffered defensively. 
I don't know how they're going to rush the passer. Are they only going to be able to rush the passer by blitzing? And if you blitz, you don't win against Patrick Mahomes. But here's the flip side, and here's why the wise guys like the Dolphins in this spot. One, these aren't the Chiefs of years past, right? They really don't have any reliable downfield targets. So the Dolphins can bracket Travis Kelsey coming off the line at tight end, double team him. And then you basically put Jalen Ramsey on Rasheed Rice and you've taken away all the weapons that Patrick Mahomes has. And the flip side is the Chiefs defense is better than anything Patrick Mahomes has ever played with. The Dolphins, what's their MO? While they're a great downfield passing team, they're a really great running team. Don't forget, Mike McDaniels, he's a running game coordinator, right? Yeah. Raheem Mostert, limited practice. I would expect him to play. Devon Achan, brilliant out of the backfield as a running back this year. I think this will be a closer game than people think. So that's why the wise guys are taking the four and a half. Personally, I took the under 44, 44 and a half. I'm not taking a side in this game. Okay, um, Packers plus seven and a half would be the side at Dallas. Dallas is going to score points. Joe Barry's defense has been a sieve most of the year. But Green Bay is a live dog. Four different receivers I like. Good tight ends. Jordan Love playing well. If Dallas went seven and a half for a Green Bay team, that I mean, if I told you they scored 27, you'd be like, yeah, I, I can see that. Um, I mean, Joe Barry's defense looked good against Chicago. It's not good. So I think it's a 33-27, 33-28 fun game to watch. Seven and a half feels way too heavy. I'll take Green Bay, sharper square. Totally nailed it. Wise guys are all over Green Bay here. It's really interesting because this number probably should be power rated at six. The line should be about six for this game. You, you have two defenses that you say Joe Barry and the Packers defense is very good. But look, the Cowboys defense gets more credit than it deserves. It's, it pass rushes, it, it's, it's pass rushes middle of the road. You've got Micah Parsons, who's you know an all-pro, had more sacks this year than he's ever had. And you've got a defensive secondary with George Bland, who had more pick sixes than ever, led the league in interceptions. Between those two spectrums, it's a lot of sizzle, not a lot of steak. And so this is a pass rush that is middling at best, so I wouldn't expect them to be a team that puts Jordan Love on his heels. And by the way, they play a lot of man. Jordan Love's passer rating is 13 points higher yes. against man than it is against yes. zone. And what you're doing against Jordan Love right now, don't forget, Dak Prescott led the league in touchdown passes. Jordan Love was number two. Jordan Love, since November, has just been lights out, elite as a quarterback. And I think it speaks to a coaching advantage for the Packers. Matt LaFleur, just a better coach than Mike McCarthy. We've seen it. Mike McCarthy is not great in late game situations. He is not great in managing the clock. Very good chance the, Pack the Cowboys put themselves in a very bad position with bad decision making late in the game. 100% agree with you. Yeah, this is the easy one. Rams plus the points, three and a half at Lions was four at one point. I get a coaching advantage, a quarterback advantage, a health advantage. And I think people are forgetting just how good the Rams draft was. Uh, their first three picks, a left guard, a defensive tackle who should be the rookie of the year defensively, an outside linebacker who is relentless. And in the fifth round, they got the steal of the entire draft in Puka Nakua. Their special teams are dubious. So that's what scares me. I don't think they win the Super Bowl. But this is a healthy team, coach, quarterback upgrade, and they have young players. We all know Puka, but they have nailed this draft. This is a team runs the ball, can throw it deep, um, can rush the passer. They're, they're not a great team. Uh, you can They're a little like Detroit. They can score a lot. You can beat them over the top. But there's no way... <laughs> I'm giving over your field goal to the Rams. The, the Rams could easily win this game. Uh, Rams yeah, plus a, three and a half, Sharper Square. Totally right. It's another live dog, by the way. If you're putting together a money line parlay, you could do worse than putting together a parlay with the Rams and the Packers. Um, because I agree with you 100%. The wise guys agree with you as well. They're going to be on the Rams at three and a half. They did bet it down from four almost immediately on Sunday night. It was the first game that the wise guys started pounding one of the wild card games were announced, and you didn't even mention, Colin, Kyron Williams. This has oh. been a different team since Kyron Williams 
came back from injury. Matthew Stafford, when's the last time like Matthew Stafford wasn't sort of the focal point of the offense, didn't throw for 4,000 yards this year, played in every game, but this team was accelerating towards the playoffs when Kyron Williams came back. Great coaching season by Sean McVay. It's curious to me that you think he's that much better of a coach than Dan Campbell. I don't see the difference in this game being on the sidelines. To me, the real difference might end up being the fact that Sam Laporta isn't playing because he's a guy who this past season, second most first down receptions on the Lions, finished the season with the most receptions ever for a tight end, tied for the most touchdown receptions. I think I think the books are discounting how important he is to the Lions and Jared Goff's comfort. Hi folks, game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for sports and comedy and concerts and theater, all those events near you. Killer last minute deals at game time, all in prices, views from the seat, best priced guaranteed, and that's the key. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets, which is the thing most people get anxious about Game time eliminates it. Easy to find tickets for every kind of event in your area. They're obsessed with saving you money and me money on tickets. That's what game time does. It's the place to find last minute deals. Game time guarantees mean you always get the best price. And if you find tickets in the same section at a certain row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Pretty cool. Download the Game Time app. Like all apps, it takes 90 seconds. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Colin, me, C O L I N, $20 off your first purchase if you do it. Download the Game Time app. The code is Colin, 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Um, this is a line game. If the Eagles are minus three and a half, I, I probably go bucks, but I think it's a close 27, 24 game. I'll take the Eagles minus two and a half, much better personnel. I mean, Tampa down the stretch, maybe Carolina a couple times. I think, you know, it's, it's a little like the Joe Flacco story. The story is better than the reality. I don't think Tampa's very good. They don't have really a home field advantage. Half that stadium will be Eagles fans. I'd take it two and a half. The numbers to me, a Philly number, uh, sharper square. It's totally sharp. If you're playing two and a half, if it's three and a half, the wise guys are going to play the bucks. That's it. Like that's, that's how it's going to go. So check your local <laughs> listings, figure out what you want the number to be and play the half point on either side. The greatest advantage that the bucks really have could be in the middle of the field with Kate Otten. If you want to be taking yeah. a player prop, you might want to think about, playing his over reception yards, keep it under say 23, 24, if you can find that. But the other advantage has been Baker Mayfield to Mike Evans this year. You know, Mike Evans tied for the league lead in touchdown receptions, but if it's going to be terrible weather and there's going to be weather all up and down throughout the country, then, and it might be torrential rain there, that's going to limit Baker's ability to get the ball downfield to Mike Evans. So it's a really, really tricky game to bet. If you have to pick a side, you got to play the number. And uh, finally, um, uh, the Bills game could be moved. There's so much snow. Buffalo's a much better team. TJ Watt's not playing. I Mike Tomlin getting 10 um, in crappy weather. It's like, I, that's a stay away game for me. Um, talk me into the side the wise guys like. Well, look, the wise guys are sort of thinking the same thing as you, right? Don't forget, this game opened at seven and a half. It lasted for about 30 seconds and got that <laughs> up immediately uh, to nine and a half, ten. I, unfortunately, am the sucker who looked at it on Tuesday and was like, eh, screw it. I don't care what the number is. The Bills are going to destroy this team. I bet it at minus 10. And then 48 hours later, I'm you know, getting reports of the winter apocalypse coming into uh, Western New York. So that scares me quite a bit. But if not for the weather, I would tell you, yeah, you take the freaking bills and you eat the number and you don't care because the Steelers forget about the fact that they're going to have a first playoff game quarterback in Mason Rudolph, which is never a good scenario. CJ Stroud, 
exempted, exempted without TJ Watt, this is just a different team in terms of they're a bad team. So you cannot bet on the Steelers if they're not going to have TJ Watt. The problem is the weather, which is such a mystery and X factor right now. If you haven't bet it yet, don't bet it. And finally, before we let you go, we'll be bringing you on for a few more weeks. Um, all the coaching changes are interesting. You're closer to the New England part of the country. I have said I would go, I would clean it out. I would go Ben Johnson. I would uh, I would consider trading down and getting, they, they need so many things on offense. They need two receivers, two tight ends, uh, a better left tackle. I mean, I, I could argue quarterback, they need everything. And I think you, if you could get Bo Nix at 12, trade down to 12 and get four or five more picks, um, I'd love to see Mac Jones with an offensive minded coach, Ben Johnson. That's the fit for me. I like Vrabel, but he couldn't get the offense right in Tennessee. McVay would struggle rebuilding this offense in two years. So would Shanahan. They just don't have any players. So I would just say, hey, listen, we're just going to go Ben Johnson. We're going to go buy an offense. The defense has some players. Um, is there, um, when, when you look at all these openings, is there, for instance, would you give Pete Carroll another shot? Yes. Okay. Now I don't, now. look, I don't think Pete Carroll's ready to quit. Don't forget, at his, at his press conference the other day, he was acting like he was getting ready to go back into the room, start prepping for the draft, get to mini camps and get into training camp and like play another season with Geno Smith. And by the way, he just had two winning seasons with Geno Smith. He's the guy who first recognized that Russell Wilson might have been cooked and made the hard decisions to jettison Russell Wilson and take the heat for that. Like if I'm if I'm David Tepper and I'm already not proving myself to be a very good owner and I've got a bad rep and I've made bad decisions and I'm firing my GMs and I'm throwing drinks at fans and I'm forcing my team to draft Bryce Young I go out and get Pete Carroll and he teaches me how to be a football owner and also how to enjoy the experience of having a football team. What do you make of the Atlanta job? I threw out, I'll throw. So I, before this in my preamble, I talked about coaches. I said, uh, two sources told me this week that Alabama AD Greg Byrne has been watching Kalen DeBoer for two, three months. And he is the betting favorite now. So I had a pretty good, two good sources on that. If he doesn't get the Bama job, I would consider the Atlanta Falcons and Kalen DeBoer. He has um, kind of an NFL temperament. They have good offensive pieces. Oh, lines, top six or seven. Good offensive pieces. He knows Penix and Bo Nix better than anybody. He's faced Bo Nix three times. He's had Penix. Those guys are not top six, seven picks. So he would know where to go on that. He would get the quarterback right. The offense is ready to go. The division's wonky, and he is a detail maven. He is a brilliant detail guy. That's my like, what? Huh? Wait. Kalen DeBoer of the Falcons. I don't like So it. that's my take. Okay. I don't like yeah. it. I, okay. I'm not sh like, look, if you, you want to get an offensive guy in there, obviously, but I would want to get a guy who is going to be able to figure out who has had the coaching experience in the NFL, as much as Kalen DeBoer is a genius and what he has done in college, it is a rough transition. Pete Carroll is the exception, not the rule. And we've seen how well certain coaches who have been coordinators at the NFL level with a certain type of experience have done, if we're talking about Shanahan, if we're talking about Stefanski, if we're talking about O'Connell, right? Even Brian Dayball. You know, at Buffalo was the Buffalo Bills offensive coordinator. So give me a guy who has been running a system at a high level in the NFL. And then I also feel like the Falcons, as good as their offensive line is in the right side of their offensive line, could be as good as any in the NFL. And when they were all healthy earlier in the year, the Falcons running to the right were better than any team. And that was a surefire bet was to bet on the Falcons being able to run to the right. I don't know if they're going to be able to keep all those pieces, right? They don't have any quarterbacking. And sure, you can say in their draft slot, do they want to get Bo Nix? Do they want to get Michael Penix? 
Do they want to go trade for Justin Fields? And what are you going to have to give up to get Justin Fields? Well, you have to give up a second round player and an important piece of your offensive line. So I think there's interesting scenarios there. I don't want a college coach coaching my team if I'm an Atlanta Falcons fan. Finally, Belichick, where should he go? That's really interesting. In in my heart of hearts, I would love to see Belichick doing TV. I think he'd be amazing at it. But look, he's 14 games away. Can you imagine Belichick with the Chargers turning that defense into something that doesn't collapse at the end of every game and ruin what could be an amazing career for Justin Herbert, an amazing career for Keenan Allen? Like, He's good enough offensively, obviously. We saw how he developed Tom Brady over those years. Tom Brady's a different cat, right? He's He is a true unicorn. We can agree he's the greatest of all time. What he did for himself, in separate from Bill Belichick, turned him into the greatest ever. But what Bill Belichick could teach Justin Herbert about recognizing coverages could just make him a better quarterback. You and I both agree. Like Herbert, he didn't regress, but... He didn't reach the next level this year. A lot of injuries. There is too much talent on that team being wasted. I'd love to see Bill Belichick coaching a team that has historically underachieved when always having an amazing roster. All right, Chad. Cross our fingers. Sharper Square Action Network. All odds provided by DraftKings, buddy. Good seeing you as always. Dude, dude hold on. Hold on. What? I need to give you some stats All because right. we went through a 48-hour cycle. Okay. Nick Saban, Pete Carroll, Bill Belichick. These are legendary coaches. There have been 48 NFL and college football title games since 2000. They coached in 22 of them. 46% of the overall title games in pro and college football they coached in. And if we're going to talk about betting, these guys deserve their own wing, 55% against the spread in their careers combined. But here is my favorite stat, okay? You and I talk about this all the time. You want to fade big favorites, teams that are a touchdown or more, doesn't matter who they are, we're doing it this week, we're going to fade the Cowboys at seven and a half, right? Yeah. These guys broke every single rule when it comes to betting big favorites. Bill Belichick, 54% against the spread as a big favorite, seven or more. Nick Saban, 56% against the spread. Pete Carroll, 55% in college, 53% in the pros. As favorites of seven or more combined, these guys were 55%. You got to win 52.3 to be in the money. You win 55%, you are a world-class gambler. If you had spent $100 just betting on these guys, you would be up $5,000. So what does that mean when 13 of the last 15 weeks, I hit 63%? What does that mean? What kind of gambler am I? Colin, you're world-class at everything. <laughs> you don't need me to tell you that. It re- What it really means is if you had taken all of your money and just started betting your blazing five... <laughs> You'd be so rich. You know what, though? Is that I still consider myself a square, which I am because I'm not a professional. And I still have I still have um, a lot of bad picks. For instance, uh, I had Atlanta last week. That was terrible. So did I. But everyone did. Like, that wasn't terrible. That was just the right side. And at the look, it's so funny. We did this contest for the favorites for my podcast in which we had 12,000 people sign up and we gave away $120,000 in prize money. And there was a season long pick them contest. You pick five games against the spread every single week and top place got $40,000. Second place got 10, third place got five. And then we had week to week, we were giving away money, right? So first place, $40,000, uh, he made a commitment to himself that no matter what happened in the last week, as, as, as right as the side was, as good as the number was, he was not going to bet Carolina. 
He was not going to bet Atlanta. He said to himself, I am not losing $40,000 on the Carolina Panthers and the Atlanta Falcons. And the guys who came in second and third, they both had the Atlanta Falcons and the Carolina Panthers. So you're not wrong, but sometimes it's just not right. Good seeing you, buddy. See you, buddy.